Hi, I'm Johnny and you're watching The Hexy Beast. Today I'm going to be starting a new series where I take a look at digital versions of some of the board games I love. So, for this first episode I'm going to be taking a look at Sagrada, the digital version that I'm going to be playing on Steam. So, anyway, without much further ado, let's get to it on the PC. <laughs> Okay, so this is Sagrada Digital, published by Direwolf Digital, and the physical version was originally published by Floodgate Games. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a quick look at the game and playing a short game. So, we're not going to look at tutorial because, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's also an online lobby mode, which is just typical online lobby, similar to any other game you've played before. Um, so we're just going to go into the local now. Um, we have a campaign mode. This campaign mode is basically just running through the cards and um, trying to beat scores. The better your score, the more stars you get, similar to other mobile games like Angry Birds, etc. So without further ado, I'm just going to take a quick game against the AI. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of not fond of in this game is, is right now there is no official solo mode like there was in the physical game. Um, that was actually my favorite way to play the physical game. So either way, I'm just going to be playing against an AI pretending it's an Automa deck. So how about we just get on with it, shall we? Okay, so we're just going to wait for this to load up a second. And as you can see, our personal objective right now is the shades of yellow. So we're looking for pips on a yellow dice. Similar to the physical version, you'll pick the top two cards and then get to choose either the front or the back of each card. Um, so let's move on and we'll get to see the tools. Um, which one should I pick? I think I'll go with the fractal drops this time. Okay, we have our tools. We have the tap wheel, glazing hammer and lathekin. Um, if you want to read these cards, I will describe them more if I use them. But if you want to read them, now's the time to pause the video. Um, these are public objectives, which means we're looking for sets of three and fours. We got color variety, and we've also got a column shade variety, so it should be quite a fun game. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, the way turns work in Sagrada is that whoever goes first will also go last, especially in two players. So the second player will actually get two turns in a row each round. Um, so anyway, let's place our first die, shall we? We place that yellow six per there, and then we're going to pass this on to Garcia. Garcia takes the purple four and the yellow one. Um, so right now we've got the red two, which we don't really want, but we are going to take that blue one and put it for there. Move on to round two. Okay, we're moving on to round two now. Okay, here come the dice. One of the things I will say I really enjoy about this game um, is, is the sound effects. I think they've, they've done really well to make a set of sound effects that really suit the game. And also don't sound annoying after you've heard them hundreds of times. So we're going to take this yellow three and we're going to place it by here now. And obviously because it's round two and I'm the second player, I'm going to pass and I'm going to get to go again. At which point I'm going to take this blue six and place it by here. Um, I'm not going to claim to be a master at this game and I, I, I might not win it, but we'll find out soon enough. One of the features of this game, which is extremely useful, especially if you've ever played a physical game, is if you hold down your mouse button, you can actually see what colour the squares are underneath your dice. So this really helps. <laughs> so anyway, so we're gonna next we're gonna go for this yellow three somewhere. If we can put it somewhere, we can't put it up there, we're gonna put it up top. And then we're gonna pass it on to Garcia. Garcia's gonna take the blue one and the purple one. Leaving us with these two. Okay, so I'm going to choose to use this glazing hammer power, which is going to spend one of my gems up here. And that basically means that I'm going to get to re-roll all of the dice that are currently out. Okay, so I re-rolled them and they became a 1 and a 5, so not much use to me. Um, I think I'm going to put the screen 5 by here, the 4 even, a 4 even, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we're now on to round 4. Okay, we keep going. We're on to round four. We've got him taking the green one. I'm looking here. I'm going to have to take this red two and put it by here. 
and then I'm going to have to draft again. I'm going to take this purple too and put it by here. And then we're going to see Garcia take his... Ooh, he's used to power. He gets to move exactly two dice, obeying all road placement restrictions. Okay, we're now on to round five, about halfway through the game. Um, I'm going to take this green five and put it by here. And then Garcia is probably going to take the one for his green six and the red two. Um, I'm going to take this green six and place it by here. So remember that I am actually looking for yellows, not greens. But I'm just placing for the sakes of getting through this game. Okay, we're now on to round six. We won't be keeping you much longer. Um, and he's going to spend some more of his gems to use a power. Um, also, if you've noticed, these powers now cost two gems instead of one, like they did at the start. The first time you use them, they're one gem. Second time, they're two. Um, so, uh, another thing that you'll notice while I'm playing digitally is that I have an undo button by here. So, say if I was to place this yellow six somewhere silly like that. For example, I wouldn't want that there because I need the yellow spot. I can undo it. Handy little feature. Also, you'll notice as I've been playing, the dice themselves actually tell you where they can be placed. So, for example, I'm going to put this red six by here. And I'm going to go for my second go, which I'm going to put the blue three by here. Then we're going to pass it to Garcia. Garcia is going to take the yellow six. And then we're going to move on to round seven. Okay, so what should I take here? Um, we're going to take this purple 4 and place it by here. And then we're going to see what Garcia takes the purple 3 and the green 6. Then I'm going to take... Oof, choices. I'm going to take the, the 3 and put it by there. So remember, we're also looking for sets of 3 and 4. That's the end of round 7. Oh, there's a lot of red in that one. Um, which is, is kind of handy for me right now. Um, is there a four? No. Um, okay, so I'm just going to place the red six there in case his personal goal is red. Then I'm going to get another go, which I'm going to use to place five. And then I'm going to pass it on. He's using another power. He's, I'm surprised he's still got gems. Okay, we're into round nine now. Only one more to go after this one. And I'm going first. So the first thing I'm going to take is probably... Choices, 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 choices. I'm going to take this purple four and put it up here. It's going to add to my set. And then Garcia's going to get two goes. He's going to take the green three. And he's going to re-roll all the dice, which is perfect for me. Um, he's now left me with stuff I can't use, so I can move that match, and so I'm doing move exactly two dice. Okay, I might have to skip a turn. Um, we're gonna try and move this green. Oh my! We're gonna move this way right here. This right here. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I think we're going to actually have to skip. I'm going to undo that. And we're just going to skip the turn. <laughs> How unfortunate for us. So in round 10, um, we're, I'm, I'm probably going to lose this game. <laughs> unless he gets exactly... Well, unless he doesn't get anything. Oh, Garcia passed. Okay, we got a yellow four, which I can put here. And then it's my final draft of the game, which is going to be a one by there, and not like I can draft anymore. So in round 10, Garcia is going to take those dice. Now, we get all the fireworks, yay! Um, is it one of the things I really like is the fireworks, to be fair. Um, now it's just going to score the game for us, which is one of the advantages to playing on PC as opposed to doing it on the tabletop. It's going to add up all the points for us. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, there is no setup for PC, so that's also one advantage. But I will say, as, as someone, I really enjoy this game. 
and that I I will generally keep it. I'm probably going to play it a lot on PC, but to be honest, I, I'm probably still going to play a lot of the tabletop as well because, like I've complained about already, probably two or three times, I really enjoy the official solo mode for this game. So anyway, that was the digital version of Sagrada. I'll uh, catch you back up by the shelf. Okay, so that was my quick look at the digital version of Sagrada. If you like what you see, please feel free to smash that subscribe button up there or check out another one of my videos by here. Anyway, I've been Johnny, you've been watching Hexy Beast. Thanks for watching and most of all, stay hexy everyone.